Well, hello there, people. This is Ron, uh, the Thermal People. How are you today? Um, today is Tuesday, August 30th, and I am here to cover our thermal class. I again apologize that I can't be live with you today, but uh, um, some duty calls. So, uh, I want to do, I'd like to cover a, a couple of examples for you so that we get a good, solid uh, set of learning out of today. I know that you should be bringing some questions to class today based on the videos you watched. And then again on Thursday, uh, you should be bringing some questions on the videos you watched. So here's the plan. On Thursday, I'm going to um, spend double the time answering questions. So on Thursday in class, I'll spend plenty of time answering the questions you might have had for today, and again, plenty of time answering the questions that you would have had from today to Thursday. As far as uh, getting, giving you some feedback on your work, could you please leave today's reflection? in the seminar room by 11 a.m. So I'm going to go out on a limb and hope that uh, you watch this video during the 10 o'clock hour and can drop that off. If you don't, please get me your reflection at your earliest convenience. So leave today's reflection in the seminar room by 11. I'm going to mess with the lights here a little bit, see if I can pick up No, nope, that's not going to do it. I'm taking a video. That's okay. So now I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a, a problem. And the problem that I'm going to do is a heat exchanger. So I'm going to apply the first law of thermodynamics to a heat exchanger. This has a lot of value in our course. It has a lot of value in many of our projects. And so I'm going to just start with a heat exchanger. And a lot of people hear that term and they aren't sure what it is. Is it a machine? Is it a device? What is it? Well, heat exchanger is very simply pipes where one fluid becomes in contact through a pipe wall to another fluid. So it, it wouldn't be unusual at all um, for us to have a big pipe. This red thing is a big pipe. And we have some water coming into that pipe. But inside that pipe is another pipe that's smaller in diameter. And so we've got one fluid maybe flowing this way. And I'll use blue to, to think of that as a cool fluid. And then we've got another fluid flowing this way, and I'll use red to think of that as a hot fluid. And, and to give you one more sort of perspective, if we could cut this thing in half and look at it at the cross section, it would look like this. Like the blue fluid flowing through one pipe and the red fluid flowing through another. Well, we know that heat transfers from hot to cold. So what's going to happen is heat is going to come out of the red fluid, go through by conduction, through the walls of the blue pipe, and then by convection into the blue fluid. And so that's what a heat exchanger is. Now there are lots of different kinds. Um, maybe instead of this being a pipe, it's a big tank. And instead of this being one pipe, maybe it's many, many pipes. My team and I went to um, Minnesota Power last Friday and saw the condenser. The condenser is just a heat exchanger. This is the red thing would be a great big tank. Steam comes in the top. And instead of one blue pipe here, there are, I don't know, 7,000. Each one is like an inch in diameter. But cold water flows through those 7,000 pipes. Steam flows around those 7,000 pipes, transfers all of the energy by heat into that cold water, and then the steam runs out of energy and it condenses down to a liquid, also a heat exchanger. 
So in the Rankine cycle, we have a heat exchanger. It is a condenser. We have another heat exchanger called the boiler. Well, the purpose of this video is to apply the first law of thermodynamics to the heat exchanger. And I need another month. So anytime you apply the first law to anything, you have to create the system and you define a system by its boundaries. Now there are three different boundaries we could draw here. We could have one boundary be just the blue fluid. We could have another boundary be just the red fluid. We could have a third boundary be the entire heat exchanger. I'm going to do all three cases and simplify the first law. And then that will be the end of the video. Let's start with the blue fluid. So the, the boundary is the blue fluid while it's in the heat exchanger. And if I were to look at it in this drawing, it would be the Yeah, so I'm using the black dash line as our boundary. I need to give some numbers or names, or I need to label these points. Mm, let's just call this point one and this point two. So the water, when it's coming in, is at point one, and when it's leaving, it's at point two. All right, so I'm going to write the first law, and I'm going to do it in steady state. I'm going to do it with the rate equation. So I'm going to do the first law, steady state. I'm going to do the rate equation. Here's what that would look like. The rate of heat transfer into the fluid, rate, plus the mechanical power, rate of work, on the fluid plus the mass flow rate of fluid flowing in, so I'm going to call that B for blue fluid, times the potential energy at point one, and this is specific, plus kinetic energy at point one, plus enthalpy at point one, minus the mass flow rate of the blue fluid, times the potential energy at point two, kinetic energy at point two, and enthalpy at point two, minus the mechanical power by the fluid, minus the rate of heat transfer out of the fluid, oops, equals zero. Steady state, so we aren't changing the energy stored in the fluid over time. It, whatever's in there, it stays that same number over time. That's what steady state means. So now, we have to simplify. For there to be work, or W, or mechanical power, you need a device with moving parts, like a pump or a turbine. There's no pump here. There's no turbine in, within these black dashed lines. So those cancel. You have to ask the question, is heat coming into this blue fluid or is heat going out? And the answer is that heat's coming in because the hot fluid will transfer heat in. The cold fluid is not going to transfer any, any heat out. So rate of heat transfer out goes away. And then we find out, well, first of all, point one and point two are at the same height, so there is no change in potential energy. And the diameter of the pipe is Staying the same, even though it might not look like it. But if the diameter stays the same, the velocity stays the same. And if the velocity stays the same, the kinetic energy stays the same. And now, we simplify this. We rewrite the equation and say the rate of heat transfer into the fluid is equal 
mass flow rate of the fluid times enthalpy 2 minus enthalpy 1. I've rearranged and brought those to the other side of the equation. So we now have written and simplified to find out how much heat is going into the blue fluid. This is exactly what we do in the Rankine cycle. And if we looked at the condenser, the rate of heat transfer or the boiler is going to be the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy. So you'll hear people say, it's all about that H. Well, that's because it is. All right, good. Now, we'll do it again for the hot fluid. First law, steady state. Let's call this point A, where it enters, and point B, where it leaves. It's nice to use numbers for one and letters for another in a case like this, just to keep them separate. So, rate of heat transfer into the fluid plus mechanical power on minus m dot of the red fluid times potential energy, net A. Energy at A, in is A, enthalpy at A, oops, that's a plus. So these are all the ins, in, on, mass flow rate, in, it's a plus. Now we do the outs. We minus the heat transfer out, minus the work by, minus the m dot of the fluid as it leaves, potential energy B, kinetic energy B, HB. Equals zero. Simplify. Again, no moving parts, so no work. No change in potential energy or kinetic energy. And we ask the question, is heat leaving the red fluid or going into it? Well, it's the hot fluid, so it's leaving. So, there is no heat. Rearrange. Solve, we get rate of heat transfer out equals mass flow rate of the red fluid. And doing the math here, making sure I have my algebra right, it's going to be HA minus HB. Because the H is going to be higher at A than it is at B, and that's the way the algebra works as well. Energy is leaving. How much is leaving? Mass flow rate of the fluid times the change in enthalpy. It's all about that H. Now what I didn't do there is I didn't redraw my boundary and I should have for that example. The red fluid Is everything in here. So redrew the boundary, created the new system, just the red fluid, wrote the equation for the red fluid. All right. One more. Now I'm going to have the boundary not be the red fluid not be the blue fluid, but be the whole heat exchanger. I'm going to draw the boundary there. So the boundary is both fluids. Both fluids. So we have two fluids coming in, the blue fluid and the red fluid. So now I need to write the equation. Now I'd, I'd like to use the black, but it's not writing very well, so I'm just going to use one of these. 
red probably shows up best for you. So again, we're going to write the first law in the steady state. We have q dot in minus or er, plus w dot on plus m dot of the red fluid potential energy at a kinetic energy at a enthalpy at a plus m dot of the blue fluid potential energy at one kinetic energy at one enthalpy at one and I'm gonna just come down here minus mass flow rate of the red fluid where it leaves potential energy at B kinetic energy at B enthalpy at B minus mass flow rate of the blue fluid where it leaves potential energy at 2 kinetic energy at 2 enthalpy at 2 minus any heat transfer out of this fluid minus any work done by the fluid equals one. Very similar. It's just that instead of one fluid entering and leaving, we had two. If we had three fluids entering and leaving, we'd have to account for all of them. So now we're going to simplify. Well, no moving parts. We're going to get rid of all the potential energies and kinetic energies. Now, it's not as easy to just choose one of these as being gone. You really have to think about, is this whole system hotter than the surroundings or colder than the surroundings? If the whole system is hotter than the surroundings, then heat will leave and we would have heat transfer out. If the whole system is colder than the surroundings, Heat will come in, we have heat transfer in. Now one thing we can do is we can wrap this whole thing in insulation. And if we wrap the whole thing in insulation, then these become small and we can get rid of them. So let's assume that the heat transfer into or out of the whole system is zero because we wrapped it in insulation. And now cancel them. So what's left? Oh, it's all about that H. Basically, we have M dot R times HA minus HB on the left side of the equation equals M dot B times H2 minus H1. That's all that's left. That's the steady state equation for a heat exchanger to consider both fluids. All about that H. Now, this is very useful in industry, in any project where you've got heat exchangers, and heat exchangers exist in so many different industries. They exist in computers. They exist any place you've got a lot of heat being generated by electricity. They exist in power plants. They exist in our cars. We have a couple of heat exchangers in our cars. So very useful. Please write down any questions you have. Next week, we're going to have you decide on your DLA. I think a really cool DLA would be to do an experiment with a heat exchanger. Think about that. All right. Again, I apologize for missing class today. But here's a 20-minute video to uh, provide some learning. Thank you.